It is moving day. You know what I like in this too? What's that? When we left the dock for the first time, every time we come to a dock, there's like exuberant amounts of work to do. This time being no different. <laughs> Oh my God. Three weeks later, here we are. And for the last few days, it has just felt like we are never gonna get this tank back in. We are never gonna get all the work done. But I actually feel like we're ready. Like we're ready to go. The boat's really clean. Everything's done. Yeah, that's a big That's a big part of this, yeah. is that making sure the boat is clean. I mean- And just um, ready. You just, you just want to be prepared and as organized as possible. Uh, that way, if anything were to happen, um, we're able to, yeah. to not trip over things and just have a nice clean passage kept boat for a good clean passage yes and we have not filmed most of this so we apologize for that but it's just been i've tried to fill in here and there it's in the gaps. been hard it is it is really hard this at the beginning had us really beaten down in the end, it's been a huge blessing because we got to spend time with family and huge shout out to Cole's mom and stepdad for coming over yesterday and just helping us finish this up. They were just a huge help to us and um, yeah, just really grateful for that and ready to get this show on the road. All right, let's go. I'm gonna take Dixie for one last land poop. All So we're not gonna take on too much because we already had the three quarters of a tank here, thankfully, but we're just gonna top it off. And of course, they've got a big diesel fast fuel hose going in here and the brand new, or I shouldn't say brand new, fixed tank. And now we're just listen, listening for the gurgle to know that she's full. So as we leave the port behind me, that tall thing right there is actually the SpaceX rocket booster that comes back and lands on the drone ship, which is not there right now. Uh, it's back out at sea. I'm guessing they have another rocket launch coming up this week. They've been rock, uh, launching probably every four or five days. In fact, the other night um, we were in bed and at one o'clock in the morning just this massive rumble and the wind must have been just coming the, towards us because it shook the boat all the windows were rattling everything was rattling and we had no idea we didn't even know that there was a launch that night and it just scared us to death but um really really cool being here in port canaveral i've talked about it before but such a cool experience to see these rockets going up taking us the internet that we get to use to send you guys these videos at home, which is really, really cool. And it's kind of like a theme park around here, really. It's funny, Josh at the dock back there was saying, he's like, yeah, I feel like we live in a theme park. So I got that from him, but um, it's so true. Just the amount of technology and all the just cool things are happening here in the Titusville, Port Canaveral area is just really amazing. Look, how cool is that? 
That's the capsule from the from the rocket. So that is the manned capsule that uh, that goes on the top of the rocket that uh, falls back to, to Earth. How freaking cool. So guys, I don't know if you know about Fitter Techs, but we picked these up at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show and met our uh, now friend Tom who runs Fender Tex. And guys, these fenders have been amazing. Now I still have three normal fenders just for emergency situations. Quick, throw the fenders out. Um, but we've used these fenders not only on the dock but also rafting up to other boats. These things are amazing. You can, as you can see, hold it this way or as we like to do, put it long ways and they're super, super light. And that's one of the things I love about them. But let me show, come a little bit closer to the camera and show you this. What's amazing about these is they're definitely an investment up front. But if this is all hand uh, woven and hand, or hand stitched, and if this were to ever get punctured, obviously, you know, something could puncture this bladder. The best thing is this bladder is replaceable and it's like 60 bucks for a, bl a new bladder. So don't quote me on that, but it's it's not a big chunk of change by any imagination. Um, so it's really nice that you can just replace that. So the, the upfront investments will last a lifetime. Uh, just take care of them. Uh, you definitely need to fill them all the way up, which is one of the biggest things. But let me show you, I'm gonna un undo these things. What I love about it the most is how much space they take, or little space they take up. So I just undo that. And just like that, these things fit perfect right on top of our fuel tank. Water tank. Or water tank. <laughs> yeah, so we've got six, three on either side um, is what we went with. And all six of them fit right there on top of the water tank. So. Just like that, they're put away. First fish on, baby! Oh, uh, maybe it's not a mahi. What is it? I can't tell what it is. That's a tuna. A tuna. No, it's a, it's a bonita. It's a big fatty. It's good bait, but we're not gonna we're gonna toss it back. Where's the dolphin? They might like him. Give me something to eat. It hit freaking hard. Another bonita. This guy is kicking. You see this fish? What are you reading? The magic thinking big. I told you guys I was going to try to do better at reading, and we have probably four or five days of travel. So I try to spend less time on my phone and at the computer and more time in the book. I started this book a long time ago. Highly recommend. <laughs> I was only 20 pages in then when I picked it back up today, but it's just really good. It's all about positivity and, um, you know, believing if you can succeed at something that you will succeed at something, which is really, Kind of all about what we've been doing right and putting a plan together and believing it'll work out so yeah really excited to dig into this more and we've is that been... the book that nori got you yes nori got it i actually have um her little note as bookmark it's rubbing off but it's really cool she said excited for you and what's to come hope this book inspires you to keep chasing your dreams this is one of our favorite reads 
So Nori is a food blogger back in Sarasota and we went to dinner with her and her husband and told her about all these crazy dreams we had. This was before we even bought the boat. And then she sent us this book in the mail, which was really cool. So thanks, Nori. I am literally like just dripping with sweat. We have had literally- Well, Lily doesn't have any pants on either. He's filming naked. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Not true. Not true. I'm kidding. But, um, I did take my shirt off because as much as I want to keep covered up by the sun, it is just so hot. It's bad. Like, I am just dripping with sweat all day today. It's probably the hottest trip we've ever made because the wind has just been... Zero. Yeah, basically zero. It's up to five knots now at our 90, so it's coming around. But guys, we've been doing 11 knots almost all day in the Gulf Stream, which has been pretty cool. The fact that we can go that fast and not have any wind with just our motor. Yeah, so motoring, doing 11 knots as Emily said, and we are expecting, we kind of, we knew that when we left this morning that there was not gonna be any wind, um, but we knew that we wanted to get out ahead of it because we are expecting it to start coming around. And as I say that, it has in the last hour started to work its way around uh, still very, very low, um, but as the night progresses, we expect it to come around and get behind us. And then I hope that we're gonna be able to fly the spinnaker. Yeah. It'd be awesome to, to be able to show that during daylight. I don't know how it will show up in the nighttime. Yeah. But nevertheless. I smell kebabs. I should go check the kebabs. Go That's show, right. Go show them what's for dinner. All right. Emily put together some fish kebabs. We just chunked up some fish. And uh, this, I believe, is hogfish with some peppers and onions. Some Adventure Cruise seasonings. What? Say that one more time. Some Adventure Cruise seasonings coming soon. So, guys, I've been hinting at that from time to time. And during our time back in Florida, we actually started working on it. We've got some Adventure Cruise seasoning coming out. Hey, I think you have a fish on. Uh, unfortunately, I think, unfortunately, I think that's not a fish. That is weeds. Um, but yes, we've been working on Adventure Cruise seasoning using the Bahama sea salt that Emily and I harvested in the Ragged Islands. So really cool uh, concept that we're obviously very excited about. Um, and I'm gonna put the, uh, the camera down and reel this in because I just caught a bunch of weeds on the lure. It is almost 11.30 and we were just able to put the parasailer up and wish I could have shown that to you. I've been really excited to fly this again since we've only, only flown it once. So this was our first time putting it up and it's dark, obviously, and I had to focus on that, but we do have that flying, and it's just really hard to describe how peaceful it is right now. Um, doing pretty good for the amount of light wind that we still have. We've got about six knots, and it's still bouncing around a little bit from 150 to 180, but we're doing about seven and a half knots. We've seen upwards of eight here and there, so we're still trying to uh, find that right angle. I think we're gonna uh, try to pinch the wind a little bit more so we can get some better winds because tomorrow it's looking like it's gonna die off if we stay on this track. <sighs> I'm gonna go lay down for a bit, try to get a couple hours of sleep before we rotate out on shifts. So I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Are you sleeping good, puppy? Are you sleeping? had the most testing experience 
of our time on a boat. We've been sailing 24 hours now with our parasailer, but we just popped it and it ripped in half. We need to fight to get it down. You were up front, I was here at the helm, I saw the 40 knots as the thing was flailing around. So, just to catch you guys up, it's been... We really haven't filmed because we just had to focus on what we're doing. Yeah, it's been a trip for us. Um, and all day today, we just had a, we had a beautiful day. And then as night came, the wind started to pick up and we were seeing sustained winds at 15 knots, uh, which for our parasailer is within line. Um, and literally out of nowhere, um, this storm, the squall just comes through and wind gusts went upwards, I think probably hit 26 knots. And yeah, as and it did, I was looking at it, I'm like, this isn't good. This isn't good. And all of a sudden it hit 30 and it just like, it was 30 for like a not even split a second. second and it just hit shredded right the back. gust just popped it like it just popped like a balloon uh next thing you know it's going all over the place and i had to crawl my way up to the front thankfully i had my life jacket on um we've had them on all night because they're pretty pretty large swells we've been surfing the swells um in fact my tether is still up there somewhere i had it got tangled up in the parasailer as I was pulling it back in um, but to keep us in line with the waves and keep us down swell I put the engines on immediately and just put it in gear just so that we can keep our heading um, and guys let me show you on the radar like this little squall like it just came out of nowhere like there is nothing else around it um and it just popped up with no warning whatsoever like it didn't and next thing you know there's blowing rain and it literally feels like a hurricane outside yeah what do you feel I feel that I want to get off the boat as fast as possible. And we're coming around Cape Hatteras in another probably 50 miles, which is known as the graveyard of the Atlantic. So I can't imagine that that's going to be smooth sailing. The wind is just roaring right now, 30 knots. Got an enclosure pulled down. Hopefully it doesn't rip it. It's gone through a hurricane, so I think it's fine. Not down like that, was it? Was it down? Mm -hmm. Um, no, maybe it was up. I can't remember now. Is there a place to bring the bucket up here? What? Is there a place to bring the bucket up here? Why, are you sick? I don't feel good. night and um, as you can see it is still very very rough all three of us myself Emily and Dixie have been wearing our life jackets all night and I was clipped in while moving around the boat the whole time. But some of these waves have been much higher than even our solar arch here today, or tonight. So it has not been fun. In fact, it's definitely 
been the worst nights we've ever had on the boat. You take me places where the winds don't blow. So I won't let go. The fire and stone in places unknown. The uh, Genoa out, or head sail out, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe 40%, maybe 50%, if that. Uh, I got reefed in quite a bit, and really just uh, trying to take the, the winds and the waves as smooth and steady as possible. We're going, I don't know, six to seven knots. risen from the dead I feel like <laughs> feeling like a salty sailor <laughs> and looking like one too I have not showered today or brushed my teeth so imagine how delightful I smell I've spent the majority of my day down here can see it in that corner ah, it's been super rough 24, 30 something hours. I don't even know. But the seas have finally calmed down a bit. And with that, I am starting to feel a new breath of life, which I'm very thankful for because after we ripped the parasailer yesterday, last night, and then had that rough night and super rough day today, my morale has just been very down in the dumps. So, that being said, we are 231 nautical miles from our destination. We are altering course a bit because, quite frankly, we're tired of being at sea and the weather changes and the wind not doing what we think or it's predicted to do. So, we are going to go in to Atlantic City. We're going to have a proper meal and a proper night's sleep and then keep making our trek north which i feel really good about we have um, been talking with justin my friend with swell sales and it's looking like the next uh 24 30 hours are going to be really good for this trek into atlantic city so there will be a, a point tomorrow morning where we're going to have to motor because it's going to be really really light wind but otherwise it's supposed to be looking good so fingers crossed that's the case because we could use a break what are you having breakfast for dinner it's my favorite crossing meal a little special k some almond milk where's mine well you typically don't like cereal so i didn't like cereal last night no you did not i didn't like anything to eat last night So we're on the home stretch and we have about 150 miles left to go for our first stop in Atlantic City. And I've been listening to this book. Actually, let me pause this. Uh, I've been listening to it on audio, but A Leaf in the Stream is actually written by one of Emily's uh, professors at Middle Tennessee State University, Stephen Fowles. And we had lunch with him uh, last time we were in Tennessee and he told us about his book and it is a whopper if you can't tell i mean this thing is like 700 and like 80 pages um so whenever i thought about reading that i'm like yeah there's no way uh to actually sit down and flip through the pages but he just came out with the audio version um and it's like 40 hours but i am now on chapter 30 and I have 28 hours left, and I cannot tell you how awesome this book is. In fact, what's really, really cool. I've been reading it too. Yeah, Emily, Emily's reading it too, but she's way behind me. I'm, I just dove in head first. 
But what's really cool is about 70 miles, 75 miles directly west of us is uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, exactly where um, Mr. Faust started his journey walking across America. And it's a journey that obviously goes through trials and tribulations and he's meets all these people along the way. And what's really interesting is that it just has such a great connection to us and the journey that we're on. And especially this, this trip, passage. this passage is by far one of the biggest tests uh, that we, Emily and I have encountered in boat ownership. Uh, this one's taken physical, mental, sleep deprived. I'm sure I look good because I got a little bit of beauty sleep last night, <laughs> but nevertheless, this has been a hard trip for us uh, just because of the conditions. Anyways, uh, having this book and reading about it um, has been has been a great way to pass the time and also to just kind of understand if you're gonna go on an adventure, expect there to, to be tests along the way. That's exactly what we're going through now. Well guys, I had to go down and grab the camera because the sunset that we are seeing right now and kind of the day that we've had today has just been absolutely amazing. So crazy how the ocean can be mean and angry and have you questioning what you're doing, but also turn into being so beautiful. Emily is even sitting here Got our computer out, feeling much better. I've got my computer out. We've been doing a little bit of emailing and figuring things out. Thank you to Starlink. Really kind of scared about what that bill is gonna look like. But uh, guys, look at, let's turn this around here. Look at that sunset. Come sail away, come sail away. <laughs> We've got the main up, up there. Got the head sail out. Let's see, what do we got going on here with our instruments? We got 14 knots of wind, and we are doing 7.2 knots. Gosh, it feels so Ooh. good. Woo! Got the hair down, finally took a shower. Amazing water. Oh my gosh. It's so, how you'll feel so much better after washing off three days worth of muck. <laughs> so, but Emily. I finally felt like showering. All I wanted to do was sit in the corner. Emily, fun. She's been so sick. Here, Dixie, you want to come up here? I'm sorry. Go come ahead. On, Dixie. She's come been uh, so sick, just seasick, that I kept saying, well, you'll feel so much better if you just go just take a shower. And she's like, like no, I am not I going down there. I can't go down there. <laughs> so, she finally. Took a shower, and how do you feel? So much better. <laughs> so, well, I was feeling better before the shower, and that's why I went and took a shower, but the shower just made me feel so much better. But it's amazing how this lifestyle can make you feel the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. I you, uh... would be lying if I said, I did not think about a chopper rescue. Get me off of this bone. <laughs> I literally told Cole, I'm like, man, I wonder how long it would take the Coast Guard to come get me. <laughs> oh. In fact, actually, while we were... Uh, All kidding aside, but really, like, in my mind, I'm like, I have got to get off this boat. This is driving me crazy. Is that this is going to be about 800 yeah, somewhere seven, seven minutes, 
50 seven to eight hundred somewhere in there. five days and we've learned a lot yeah we have about we've each learned. other and about <laughs> ourselves yeah so not to ramble on but i do want to talk about what i have learned and that was that i was you know we came out of florida and we were making like 11 knots like we got in that gulf stream and it was just beautiful we were making 11 knots like everything's going good the first day we were out above saint augustine like no time at all and i just kept going for the gold i kept chasing the wind to the east and kept going further and further east because the uh, florida georgia line the armpit if you will uh, was drying up. There was going to be no wind there. So we just kept pushing further and further east. And then we got to Cape Hatteras or just below it. And we were a hundred miles off of Cape Hatteras. Whew. And next thing I know, like to try and, you know, it, had we have gone all the way up to Nantucket, which I still think we should have done, um, you know, it would have been no big deal. And that would have been the right call. But with Emily not feeling good and the whole scenario, we decided that we wanted to push back towards land. And we originally were thinking Virginia Beach and then we're thinking uh, uh, the Chesapeake, but we, couldn't get, we couldn't get there. We just could not get there. The wind and the waves would not allow us to, to pinch pinch in and, and get there, so. And this has been really hard getting here too. Yeah, we Atlantic. almost today talked about just going to Nantucket because we've been going and going and going and trying to get closer to land and closer to land and it's, it's yeah. literally taken all day to do I don't know what we've done today but it's not that much yeah maybe a hundred miles maybe so it's just um it's been slow going today for sure we're finally like in the last hour we finally really started getting some good wind and and you know cooking